In this segment, we are going to focus on developing clinical questions and learning how the PICO format can aid our search for the best clinical evidence. Converting an information need into an answerable clinical question is the first of the five steps in the evidence-based practice process. Articulating a question using clinical cues leads to formulating a search strategy that will result in retrieving high-level information with a high degree of relevance in response to the clinical query. PICO is an anagram that stands for Patient, Intervention, Comparison, and Outcome. It is used as a way to organize a well-built and answerable clinical question. What makes a well-built clinical question? First, the question should be directly relevant to the problem at hand. Second, it should be phrased to facilitate searching for a precise answer. Third, it should be focused and well articulated. And fourth, it should contain all four PICO elements. Before we continue with the examination of how to construct a question using the PICO format, let's draw a distinction between background and foreground questions. Background questions concern general knowledge. These types of questions generally have only two parts, a question root who, what, when, where, how, or why, and two, a disorder, test, treatment, or other aspect of health care. Often these questions can best be answered by using a textbook or consulting a clinical database. Foreground questions are specific knowledge questions that affect clinical decisions including a broad range of biologic, psychological, and sociologic issues. These are the questions that generally require a search of the medical literature and that are best suited to the PICO format. This table shows the four PICO elements. Plus, it adds two additional considerations to ask ourselves as we are formulating the question. What type of information do we want? And what do we want to know about the diagnosis or therapy of a disease? Or are we concerned about the prognosis for the patient? Why does this matter? It matters because the highest level of evidence that we can expect to find is dependent on the type of question we are asking. Although we would expect to find randomized controlled trials or systematic reviews for a therapy question, it is not realistic that we will find the highest level of evidence for all questions. In some instances, case reports may be the best evidence we can find. So, not only is it important to understand what the level of the study is, in order to determine the quality of, of the research, but it is also important information that can be used in formula, formulating search strategies because certain types of research studies lend themselves to certain types of clinical questions. This table from a UIC library research guide outlines some of the terms that will be useful in developing search strategies for different types of clinical questions. We discuss this in greater length in various other sections of this course. Now, let's take a look at an example. We have a patient with a cold who wants to know if taking vitamin C helps prevent colds. This is a question about prevention or treatment. So we might expect to find at least one good randomized controlled trial, or even better, a systematic review or meta-analysis. P 
P stands for patient, population, or problem. In this case, we have a 34-year-old with a cold. She asked if taking vitamin C would help prevent future colds this cold and flu season. This could be a background question. Does vitamin C prevent the common cold? However, if there are other important considerations, it could be a foreground question. Is the patient otherwise in generally good health? Is she immunocompromised? Are we measuring how much vitamin C? Are we measuring specific outcomes like fewer colds? The intervention in this case is vitamin C. In other types of clinical questions, the intervention might be a procedure such as surgery. The I could also be an exposure to an environmental hazard or a diagnostic test such as an MRI. In our case, we are comparing the use of vitamin C to not using vitamin C to prevent colds. In general, the comparison shows an alternative or control strategy, exposure, or test for comparison with the intervention in question. Sometimes the comparison is, is a placebo, and often the comparison to the intervention is just implicit. What outcome are we looking for? In this case, we could measure the number of colds, the severity of the colds, or the duration of the colds in patient taking vitamin C, as opposed to those not taking vitamin C. For other patient problems, the outcome might be mortality rates, whether test scores were improved, or whether there were a reduced number of adverse effects. This clinical scenario presents additional information for formulating a number of answerable questions. In a 55-year-old female with a history of hypertension, sudden onset of chest pain and shortness of breath, with swelling in right leg for two days since return from a recent vacation, on currently uh, estrogens and atenolol, VQ scan read as high probability for pulmonary embolism, patient started on Lovenox, treatment with Coumadin initiated in hospital, sent home in stable condition on Coumadin for six months. This case generates several types of questions. For example, there could be a diagnosis question, a therapy question, and an etiology question. A diagnosis question in this case might be in patients with suspected pulmonary embolism, is a v VQ scan as sensitive and specific as pulmonary angiography in diagnosing pulmonary embolism. A therapy question might be, in patients with known risk factors and a high probability of pulmonary embolism, how does a six-month treatment with anticoagulants compare to a treatment period of three months in preventing recurrent thrombosis? An etiology question in this scenario might be, in postmenopausal women on hormone replacement therapy, as opposed to those not on hormone replacement therapy, is there a greater risk for pulmonary embolism? This concludes the PICO unit. In the next section of the course, we will look at step two, searching the literature 
for the best evidence. Before you move on, please complete the PICO assignments that go along with this unit.